It's not very good. Before this video starts, if you want to support me, or you just want a shirt that's kind of nice, there's a store-wide discount code that you can use from the 3rd to the 5th of July to celebrate a date that I don't celebrate, it's only in America. And by store-wide, I mean only my merchandise. If you buy anyone else's, I will know. I'll know. I feel like there should be a, a little bit of a preface to this video uh, because of two things that you're probably already thinking. The first one being... Hey! Everyone else has already done this. Why are you doing it? And... Hey, where, where have you been? I'm, I miss the old Kappa Kaiju. I used to upload once every two weeks instead of once every two months. Luckily, the answer to both of those is mind your own business. I don't have to tell you anything. Uh, no, but serious, I just didn't... I couldn't think of a video idea, so I just thought... Just don't, mate. You know, the reason I'm making this now is because, um... I've been quite busy, but in my spare time I've delved into, you know, watching some movies that I've missed. Uh, I've been getting into 4K Blu-rays. I adore the high bit rate in HDR. You know, even, even normal Blu-rays for international releases that won't get a 4K disc. Yeah, I've been really enjoying my time. Rocketman and Into the Spider-Verse uh, look absolutely phenomenal on 4K. I finally got to see House, uh, Seven Samurai. Uh, I got to see The Peanut Butter Falcon, The Lighthouse, which I adore. Uh, and on my second viewing, I realized, oh no, I'm enjoying myself. God forbid. What example would I be setting to my child fan base if they saw me watching a movie that was made for creative purposes and wasn't solely to capitalize on the international market. China. What kind of example would I be setting? Being the man of extremes I am, clearly, I just bounced to the other end of the spectrum, the complete opposite, and started watching Bright TV. What a terrible name, by the way. So I went from a technical masterpiece of a film that transcends its contemporaries to a film, technically. Um, luckily, most of the things on Bright TV are shows. Not luckily because they're better, just because they're shorter. Again, only technically. They feel twice as long as they are. Each of the episodes are a different length, and it kind of doesn't seem to depend on the actual series it's in. But they all average around about 9 to 10 minutes. Which does raise the question, if they're so short, and I've invested such little time into watching them, why don't I just drop this topic? I could have made a video about something else. And yeah, I could have. Or I could have followed my dreams. Uh. Also, I feel like I've I've passed the event horizon of Brat TV. Like I've watched too many episodes that there's so much knowledge of their shows rattling around in my brain that if I don't expel it somehow, it's gonna like sever a connection and I'm gonna lose motor function. More motor function than I already don't have. If I bend these knees, they're not coming back up. Brat TV has, by my count, about a billion fucking shows, but we're gonna focus on three. Attaway General, which is a show about high schoolers going to a hospital to dick about for a few minutes per week. Uh, hopefully the season ends with them just burning down the, the hospital and they have to transfer to another one. That would be phenomenal. Stage Fright, a show about guess which demographic in guess which location, you're correct, it's teenagers in a school. Wow, how did you get that right? With the twist this time being that the extracurricular activity is a stage play turned criminal investigation carried out by what appears to be five-year-olds. Hey, that's the name of the show. And lastly, uh, uh, I don't know how this angle will work, but Chicken Girls, which is the longest running show on Brat TV. I don't know how I'm going to transition out of that. God forbid. Who knows? But Chicken Girls is the longest running show on Brat TV, and it's about something. I'm sure of it. I'm just not entirely sure what I'm supposed to latch onto while watching it. In fact, it could just be like a long form abstract theory piece like 1967's Wavelength, but with slightly less droning noises. That's right. Get dunked on, children. I hate you. Most of the shows on Brat TV kind of follow the same structure, with the school being the backdrop to the uh, interpersonal conflict that's going on and the drama and the relationships and what have you, with the extracurricular activities being mainly used to progress the story and, like, actually create a finale for the season. 
Uh, so it's basically just school child goes to school and also nice golf. Shot. That's the kind of structure that the chicken girls follows, but because it's been going for so long, they just keep changing the activity and what's going on in each season, which is a good idea, but it's written with such like an immediate hard cut. It's kind of confusing and I'm not entirely sure what's going on at times. It's it doesn't really work for how the characters are acting and it somewhat feels like if I was to just say this channel is now about the performing arts and I started crying. Over the course of the six seasons this show was currently had with a seventh on the way I think the geniusly named main character, Rhyme, the noun, has had, uh, for the first two seasons, was a dancer, which was what the show was originally about, and then in season three went to theatre, which is kind of related to dancing and ad singing, very smart, and then for the next two seasons, she was a writer, which is like, dancing for the soul, and then in season six, they're cheerleading. Okay, at some point the question strays away from how will this change affect her life and more towards what crime is she running from? This is a lot of job changes in a very short amount of time. And also, because not every character will do everything, once they stop dancing and they just start doing whatever with the extracurricular activities, a lot of the characters just kind of get left behind in the background and just don't do anything while rhymes off uh, beating the shit out of ninjas or something. I don't know what- I, Season 7 is going to be crazy. And these characters just don't do anything while also sometimes just spontaneously getting their own storyline. And when I say their own storyline, I don't mean like a character arc. Um, that would make it a show. Uh, no, I'm referring to the flavor of the season boy toy that they have to pretend to be anxious of, uh, around. Which leads me to my favorite part of the entire show. There aren't many reasons to watch this show, but by far the biggest is to watch someone older than 15 write dialogue for 15 year olds who then have to desperately pretend to be in love with each other and have that take up like half the episode. It's amazing. It's probably what their main demographic comes to watch these shows for, I don't know, I don't think their demographic is adult men pointing out flaws in their work as their job. Thank you very much, by the way, for supporting me become a member. Um, but still looks very strange from an outsider's perspective, which I hope we all are. You here, Ellie? So are you. What's wrong? Nothing, just stuff at home. I really had to get out of there this morning. I get it. Yeah? Yeah. If you need an escape, there's a cool band playing at the Heat Wave tonight. I get in for free because my older brother sends a owner. I can't. I have a dinner tonight. Well, if you change your mind, you know where to find me. I love how that amazingly dry dialogue ends with him saying, You know where to find me, which she objectively doesn't, and then he just leaves, and she ends up calling him on the phone anyway. What was the point of that line, especially when teenagers don't say that? Was that a meta commentary? Am I out of the loop? But that's just chicken girls. Surely they're not all like this. And you'll be right, they're not all like this. Some of them get even weirder. Enter stage fright, which in my script I say I've dressed appropriately for, but that is a lie because the vest that I ordered has not come in the mail yet and I need to get this video released at a certain time to get the the thing at the start of the video to make sense and this arrived instead and I just don't give a shit but it doesn't really matter because I, the, the costume design on Stage Fright ranges from Victorian era London to Swashbuckler Now these costumes are part of the stage play which acts as the extracurricular activity for this series but more in a vague sense because naught but two minutes into the first episode this dude just gets his shit rocked by a chandelier. Oh no! Bandages covering his face! That treatment's only used for the worst kind of injuries! As you could probably guess, the whole series revolves around the whodunit of this situation, which is a very interesting choice because usually the whodunit is basically a very similar structure to each other, but allows for the rioters to show off 
their writing skills, their prowess in the field, weaving narratives in and out, all of which ending up being dead ends, but adding a little fact that ends up finding the solution to the whole thing. The writing is shit, so none of this matters, but it is quite interesting to watch a show go through the motions of having a better script. Like, boiled down, the entire season just is these the, a lovable cast of misfits running around and accusing people with varying levels of evidence, ranging from, ah, uh, I have a hunch, to they were in front of my finger when I stopped spinning around, so they must be the killer. At one point, they break multiple laws and school guidelines, risking being arrested, or worse, expelled, expelled. Uh, just so that they can break in to a, the school journalist's office. Um, despite the fact they... The only reason they have to suspect her is that she wrote a story about it that was good for her, and she was there and could physically do it because she has a, a normal body that isn't in the ethereal plane. And they break in and find motive, a pretty shit motive by the way, about five seconds before they accuse her. What a feat of detective work, this is astounding. Stranger still is that before this episode, if we go back one, they make a point of establishing that the killer, the attempted killer, he's not dead, um, needed access to a lockbox, a safety box that has the winch controls that would access, you know, the whole chandelier ganking a human being kind of thing. But you need a key that only one person has, and that's it. She infers that maybe that person did it, he gets upset, and that's the end of it. But it feels like they're setting up the fact that the key is important, which is quite common in a whodunit. The limiting factor, only the people in this house could have possibly killed him. We're too far away from any town for that to make sense. Or like, only the family members would have known the key to this safe. It, it limits the amount of people so that the audience can figure out who it was at the same time if they're smart enough. But keys are confusing and writing is hard, so they just ignore it. Whenever the person they accuse couldn't physically get the key, if, if it doesn't make sense for them to be able to get access to the key and then open the lockbox and then drop the winch, they're just like, eh, fuck it, you can just cut the rope. The first person they suspect is the girlfriend of the victim who was cheating on blah 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 has motive and in the um the imaginary she did it like playing out the crime in their heads she just gets like scissors and snips the rope which does it really take four amateur detectives to determine whether or not a rope has been cut you were at the crime scene you would have seen it and when they accuse the journalist girl they just they just ignore it. Like, nobody brings up the fact she would have to have access to the key. So I, I... I assume the key was only relevant to the first person when they establish, Oh, you can cut it. The key is actually not important. That's a, that's a red herring. Don't think about that. Anyone could have done it. Anyone in the school. Holy shit. This is getting serious. Which would have been a nice twist at, like, episode 6. Not the moment you establish it, but fine. Surprisingly, despite the show telling me it isn't, the key is actually important. It's revealed how, or who took it, and then how they actually got access to it, who gave it to who, all of that, how all this worked. But I don't remember exactly what, because it was revealed three whole minutes before the attempted killer was revealed. Nothing happens related to the overarching plot until it suddenly does, but only for approximately half a minute, and then they just go back to their interpersonal school drama, as if school children have anything of interest to say, especially to someone in a different year level to them. Pfft, I don't think so. Overall, absolute masterpiece. Highly recommend. It's changed my life. You already know it's bad, 
I don't need to go into depth about the characters and the motivations. Pretty much nothing makes sense, even in the vague, almost non-existent rule set that's defined in this makeshift reality. Like, I don't... What the hell are these school students doing here? They have... They're not, like, shadowing nurses because the nurses just never show up, and they're not shadowing doctors because none of them give a shit. And before anyone comments, I can't believe they let Jesus become a doctor. I'll f I'll hurt you. You guys have probably already seen videos about Adaway General, and if you haven't, you should. They're pretty good. Go watch them. But I, I, I'm not going to focus on the plot of the characters really that much, but I will point to one of my favorite scenes, which is a continuation on two characters getting together in episode two for no reason, and then they break up in episode six, again, for no reason, because TV show, but it's, it's done in just the best, the best way. Look, Maeve was right. I'm a jerk. Should stay away. I can't help but feel like the direction he was given was act, uh, act sad. Act sad. Also, I don't know who Maeve is. I looked up, it's not one of the four main cast. I looked up uh, the IMDB page and looked up who plays Maeve and I didn't recognize them at all. That's how much of an impression this show has left on me. The thing I want to focus on specifically for Attaway General is production quality. You want it, Attaway General, don't got it. I will say, barely having the budget to make your shows in a high school and then saying, you know what, let's do our next one in a hospital is definitely a bold choice, especially when the high school is easier to do and still has noticeable flaws. Like in Stage Fright, where in the two instances somebody needs to break down a door, it doesn't really put up much of a fight and very clearly changes doors mid-scene to something that wasn't even connected to the walls and could never be connected to the walls, or just, just this. Maybe Chicken Girls is more your speed, where they have a prom night as one of the season finales, and you can very clearly tell they didn't hire extras, and they only have the cast that have speaking roles here, so the entire thing just looks completely empty. Jumping back to stage fright, we've got this little memorial placed here for the character that got ganked by the chandelier, and it's just like, two flowers, a picture of him, he's not dead, and a get well soon card that's just placed in the middle of nowhere, despite the fact he has a hospital room, because again, he's not dead. This is bound to exist in generally any TV show because of the, the budget they're given, but it's, it's even more noticeable in a hospital, because it's very hard to make a hospital feel real and alive with a very low production value, especially when the person in charge of lighting is afraid of shadows, but is also very sensitive to strong lighting. They don't turn on a light when they enter a place called the shed. What the fuck is lighting them? The ceiling? Nothing says high budget like everything being perfectly softly lit and every object in frame also being in focus at all times. Oh, what's this? An interesting scene. Oh no, I've been played a fool yet again. Oh, woe is me. I should have I should have seen this coming with a shooting schedule allotted of one whole day and a post-production uh, of seven minutes. Seven minutes for post-production sounds strange, but it would actually account for one of the more uh, stranger parts of this show being the color grading that is objectively pretty bad. Now, a bright, oversaturated color palette is actually kind of good in certain scenes for this type of a show, but in general... It feels like it's trying to kill me with color. You kind of forget at times because you watch the show and it, then it becomes the baseline. Um, this is what the show actually looks like. I've been grading it, I've been desaturating it by myself, which is, shouldn't do. But just to show, that's what it looks like. And you see that and you just realize, oh my, th people aren't orange. People just don't naturally become orange. The show isn't graded poorly from my opinion, it just is objectively. If you look at this screenshot, the first thing that you should notice is how this is a little too warm for an outside shot, but the second thing is, why is this brown tree turning green? Yeah, as it turns out, whoever graded this has been trying to pull color out of pure black, because every single scene has some kind of artifacting, like oversaturation, or just visual noise created from color grading that isn't 
from YouTube's compression. No one watching Brat would have the technical knowledge to make that argument, but I don't fucking care. I'm finished talking about it anyway, General. I'm taking this shit off. One thing I haven't specifically gone into is uh, the acting, which is bad, but I, it's not like that bad, and I don't want to go into it too harshly because it would imply, as the audience, you would like infer that that means the actors are bad, which isn't something I want to specifically do because it's really not their fault. There's a lot more that goes into it than just this person is bad at doing their job because that's it's a little unfair to say that. Acting is not just a thing that somebody turns on and then they're suddenly somebody else. It, it's reliant on many other factors including the director's directing uh, and the writer's written lines, which I've already s shown is quite shit. I'm not saying that the director or the writer per se is bad, what they're creating is complete shit, but maybe that's not indicative of their creative talent, they just don't care. But despite the acting on Brat TV being complete shit, I don't want to pin that on the TikTok children, because it's really not their fault. Take for instance, um... Child, I've the name's escaping me, but she's 17, so I'm I'm still correct. Uh, who gives a shit? To me, in the show, she sounds American. That was until I saw this. That's a bit difficult. There's like six thought, seasons to pick from. That's not American. Long movie. That's English. It's actually not. It's Australian. I'm just so ashamed of myself. I cut ties with my own country. But the point is, I didn't notice that. There are many times where the person's accent has been distracting to the final product. On the good side, think uh, Nick Cage and Con Air, or Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins, and on the bad side, think... Uh, Robin Hood with Kevin Costner, or just... Any, um, any accent that isn't Scottish from Gerard Butler. I'm not saying the acting is good per se, but it's a lot better than it could have been. And if there was just, you know, a little bit more confidence in front of the camera and they were allowed to be a little bit like looser with the script, have a little bit more fun with it, I actually think the show would be significantly better, simply because of watching this bloopers reel that I accidentally clicked on, which was somehow more entertaining and more enjoyable of an experience than the actual show itself. They're just joking around, having fun, smiling, you know, having normal conversations like a fucking teenager would, having fun. They're, they're just having plain good old fun. I almost, I almost remember what that feels like. I just spend my days listening to Avril Lavigne on repeat, just, just to feel something anymore. The cinematography also wasn't that great, but there were actually some really like good shots, like like this one. This is a good shot that could have been great, and I'm not just talking about four chicken girls. I'm talking about in general. I'm being completely serious, by the way. It works really well for this scene, it, it makes sense for what the characters are talking about, uh, it is storytelling through the camera, and it even works well with the music, which up until this point has been what would be described as beige. If they really went for this shot, they just, they just wanted it to work and they just trusted it, it would have been so much better. It would have been genuinely nice to watch, just change the angle a little bit, maybe pull back, leave the shot as it is, just hang on it for just that little bit longer, and don't use it as the opening shot for tw like two times in a row, don't use it as the establishing shot, it would have actually been really, really good, which is fucking infuriating because it's in Chicken Girls. And that's all the good that I'm willing to talk about these shows, because I have spent six pages talking about a, a TV show aimed at kids, um, and as I was writing this, it turned into seven. So I think I'm... No thanks, I'm fine. No more. Uh, these are the boys, that are the fellas that are supporting me. The homies, uh, the big, big, big dog. Hoorah. They're supporting me uh, through the membership thing on uh, YouTube. Uh, thanks. Thanks to everyone who's still subscribing and keeping up with my work. Uh, I got busy because of uni, but that's done now for a bit. Uh, more videos soon, and I'm just really drawing this out because the last few times that I've done the scroll thing, it's been far too short, 
and I always underestimate it, and the scroll thing goes by way too fast, so this is how it is. Buy my merch if you want to support me, obviously. Use the, the code um, to get 15% off on these dates, America time, and subscribe, like the video, follow me on fucking Twitch, follow me on Vimo, what the hell, is that even a thing, Vimo, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man, uh, yeah, that's it, that's all I can think of, my brain's empty, brain not work good, <laughs> ooh, ooh, monkey, alright, uh, I'll, so, I'll see you later, boys.